Hello and welcome to the Organic Beehive channel where today I'm going to be walking you through how I make a baby sunbonnet. As of the making of this video, I have a one month old baby niece and I wanted to be able to gift her with something that was handmade especially for me. So this is great if you're looking for a handmade gift to give to another, or you have a baby yourself and you're needing a little bit of extra sun protection, then watch today's video where I get real honest because I have to say that I still consider myself a beginner sewer, so I do go through some mistakes and I, figure things out in real time. And the reason I share that is to give you a little more confidence because I often watch expert seamstresses and whatnot, and it's a little intimidating because they never make mistakes. And so I think if they're perfect at doing that, how am I even going to be able to do something of that nature? So again, I hope you enjoy this video and you also learn to make a sunbonnet yourself. This pink fabric here is my main fabric and I folded it in half so that now when I cut this I'll get two identical size pieces. So I'm cutting this to get two pieces of the main fabric and then I have this on the fold. I'm not going to cut here. I'm just going to cut along this side and then when I unfold it, it will be expanded. This is the center piece of my bonnet, and I just need one in the main fabric, so I didn't fold it at all. I'm just gonna cut around this, and that'll be my center piece of the bonnet.
as you can see, I chose white for my lining fabric. You could use any type of coordinating fabric, um, whatever's cute, but I just went with a classic white. And I went ahead and did the same exact thing. I cut this on the fold so that the visor was nice and symmetrical. I did one centerpiece and two of the side bonnet pieces. Okay, so I ended up changing the pattern of the sunbonnet a little bit. So as you can see here, this is the pattern that I have listed in the description below. This is specifically the measurements of the brim that is in that pattern. Now this is just like a basic um, visor. <laughs> for your baby and it would work great, but I wanted to change mine up a little. So what I decided to do was, because this is for a little girl, 
I can't resist ruffles. So I'm going to change up the pattern a little bit and show you what I do to create a ruffle for the brim of the sunbonnet. So as you can see, this is quite a bit longer than the original. And so what you need to do is um, consider that when you do a ruffle, the fabric is going to get bunched up and so you're going to need more of it. So a basic rule of thumb when creating a ruffle for anything is to multiply the length of this by one and a half and that's exactly what I did here and I'm going to show you how I made the pattern for this. So the original pattern was here and so it had specifically said that this was the fold and this was the um, the pattern for the the brim and so when you unfold it each side is symmetrical. So what I first did was I measured how much the size of this was. So that's six and a half. So when you unfold it, that will be um, 13. So what I did was I multiplied, here's my, this is all like homeschooling stuff. <laughs> I just multiplied 13 by one and a half and I got, can you see that, 19 and a half. So I want my brim to be 19 and a half inches total. Now since a regular, you know, printer paper is only 11 inches in length, I knew I needed two pieces of paper, so um, I'm not gonna tape it here because I'm not gonna redo this, but um, just for visual purposes, um, here are the two pieces of paper. And then I marked off 19 and a half, so that would be here and then a little bit over here as well. So I marked where it would start and end. And then in the starting point, I went ahead and took the pattern and I traced it. And it only goes up to here. This is just the pattern that I created, but it would ideally only come up to here. And then I would flip it over and find my end mark and do the same. So what you're left with is this big gap here. And so all I did was I met the two pieces together with a straight line. And so the end product looks like that. And this is what I'm going to use for my ruffled brim now. So here's my new pattern. Now, if you're going to fold your fabric, you can also fold your um, pattern that way. That, um, so when you're finished cutting this out and you unfold it again, you have like a perfectly symmetrical brim. Or you can just lay it out just like that and cut around that as well without the fold. Either way works, but um, when you do it on the fold, it makes it a little more precise in that way. So this, I have my main fabric and I have my lining fabric as well and I pinned it together and now I'm just gonna sew this rounded edge. So with right sides together, you're going to sew a seam on that rounded edge of the brim.
So I sewed that round edge. Now I'm gonna turn it the other way and I'm going to iron this so it lays nice and flat and it's just easier to sew that way. Now I went ahead and de did the original brim as well just because this is gonna be a practice piece for me. Quite honestly, I am learning as I'm going and I've never done a ruffle before. So I'm gonna test it out on this one just to see if I can do it. And then I'm gonna do the longer um, piece that is actually gonna go on to the bonnet. So on your machine, you have a lot of different options for stitches. Um, obviously I use this one a lot, but when it comes to ruffles, you want something like a little bit bigger than this. I, you know, I don't see anything on here that shows it. So I am going to mess with, I'll bring this down here. I brought this normally it's, here but to make it a little bit longer i i changed that up and i don't know we're gonna see <laughs> we're gonna see how that goes it's recording. all right so here goes nothing this is why i'm doing a practice fabric to see if i can do it so um one suggestion i heard was make sure you have a long tail here so I did so and I'm just gonna go for it and you normally when you're sewing you do forward and a little back to um, put the stitch in place but with ruffles and the gathering stitch you don't do that All right, I already messed this up. So the seam ripper is my friend. I'm gonna take out that stitch I just did and consult my owner's manual. I'm so bad about looking at the owner's manual for this stuff, but I really wanna do this step. Okay, so I played with this a little bit and this is how I want my stitch to look but I want the, um, I want the stitch length to be a little longer. So I set that at four and then I set the tension really high. This is the highest it will go. And so what I noticed happened, here's like a scrap fabric here. Let me, um, focus that okay as you can see um, it kind of naturally started gathering on its own and then I helped it along the way so you have both your top thread and then the thread in the bottom what didn't work was I was pulling them both at once and it was hard to get it gathered. So I just did one thread at a time and I just kind of, I think I've got <laughs> most of it done on this one, but I'll show you with the next one, but I think it worked. So we're gonna go for it. So you can see here that I ironed this so it was nice and crisp. And now, uh, wish me luck because I'm about to do the gathering stitch for the brim. So I'm going to make sure I have a nice long tail. Nice long tail. <laughs> Can't be too safe. And I'm going to go. Now at the end, I want to make sure I have a nice, long 
tail. So as you can see it with that higher tension, it already created a bit of a ruffle. So now I'm going to help it out here. I've got my long tails here. I'm just going to take, whoops, this is so not professional. <laughs> um, I'm just going to take one of the threads and kind of pull and start giving it a little bit more. There it goes. See, it builds that tension. And then I just kind of spread it out and see how far I can go. Okay, so here's the ruffles. Um, some things to think about. Um, so you've got the excess thread on this end and the other end. I would work from both ends and just kind of um, evenly distribute the ruffle uh, among the fabric. <laughs> and uh, don't pull the thread too hard because it will break. Um, but I'm not too worried about it because it's going to get sandwiched between these pieces. You're not going to see it. And like I said, it's going to be sewn. So I'm not worried about it um, unraveling in the end. Now I'm going to take the hat piece and I'm going to sew this onto the front part of the hat. So you're going to want to find your middle of the ruffle. So you just fold it in half. Find the middle there, find the middle here, and start pinning. Now that this is all pinned, I am ready to sew, but before I do that, I need to make sure that I put all my settings back to where they were. Okay, so the pattern came with um, a template for just ties, so you can tie your bonnet. So I'm going to do that on my main fabric here, the pink. Um, and you know what? I may make it a little bigger because this doesn't look very this doesn't look very wide. You're going to want to fold it, be able to fold it. So I don't know. I might play with that, but. Um, that's the pattern and go ahead um, either way you're going to want to cut up in your main fabric a tie okay so here's my fabric what I'm going to do is fold in these short ends just to make it cleaner and then what you're going to want to do and now I can't do both but you're going to want to Fold this in for that clean edge, and you're going to want to fold this in for a clean edge, and then you're going to fold that in half, and you're going to sew. So I will show you the end result next.
so I just finished sewing the main fabric to the lining fabric and I joined that around the face. Now we're going to finish the back side. But in the middle, you do want a little gap. So I am going to um, not sew in the middle there so that I can turn it inside out. And that little opening you're left with, you're now able to have enough space to turn the bonnet right side out. So once it's turned right side out, you're pretty much done. You have that opening that you have to take care of and I'll leave a link in the description below to a tutorial that shows you how to do an invisible stitch if you do need it. 